So this is a small addendum to the compound angle dovetail video. I want to explain a small shortcut that you can take that I excluded from the video because it seemed like it would be one of those, well, how come that can work, but the other angle can't work? So I wanted to take that out to leave out the confusion. And also I wanted to show some quick sort of demos with the board to show you how the compound angle fluctuates and changes and, and why it changes. You'll be able to see that kind of visually with this projection that we have in the other window. Now this is the compound angle that I put together in the demo, which has both boards inclined. So we have the tailboard inclined and the pin board. Now the pin board's a soft inclination as you saw before, but it's still there. Now as we saw in the video, the miter angles that we see on these boards, the ones that get cut, well neither one of these angles is the angle that's on one of these bevel gauges. So it's a, it's a function of the two being combined together. So that's why we always had to use a third bevel gauge to sort of steal angles to transfer them around when we're doing the layout. Now one thing I did in the video was to find the horizontal on this pin board is I just used this other combination square. I put it here, then I drew a line. Then I took the pin board, used another bevel gauge, and then I measured it. Now once I had the horizontal line marked on here, I could just move this bevel gauge up and down to mark off all the rest of the layout lines. Now one thing that's interesting to note is that where that horizontal line was, of course, if it's horizontal to the bottom, it's also horizontal to this very bottom edge. Now you can probably see where I'm going with this. That also means that it would be the same as that. So while this miter doesn't match either one of these other two bevel gauges, after you've marked it and you've done this cut, you can simply take this bevel gauge the third one and just set it to the miter angle that's there and now you can mark off all those horizontals. You don't have to do this trick of a horizontal. I decided to do that because I thought it made it more clear what you were trying to get and it's very clear that you're getting a horizontal line to the bottom surface with that. So one of the things that's difficult also to sort of visualize with this is why does this miter angle change as the inclination changes? So what I've done is I've put this with you know the second camera head on onto the tailboard. So you're looking at this tailboard head on right here. So you can't really see the miter angle that's on the front of it. That's all because you're just looking straight into the side of the board and that's exactly what I want. So the miter angle on the front of the tailboard, we don't care. The only thing that we care about is the inclination of this board to sort of visualize this. Now this board has already been cut, this pin board has already been cut so that I could assemble this joint and the top of this pin board is going to be at the top of the tail board. Now what if I change this inclination? So let me tip this pin board down. As I tip this pin board down, where this top part needs to be, like if I tip this down to here, I would actually have to have it just at this point. So this part here would have to be at this point. That means the inclination that we have from here to here, just this short little distance, would be spread over this entire length of this board. And as I go further down, now the top edge of this board would be located just here. Well, that means we take just this little tiny bit of an inclination and we stretch it over this entire board. You can see that as you go lower and lower on this board, you're going to be stretching a small inclination, but you're going to be stretching it across a whole board, making it that it's going to become it's going to become a shallower and shallower angle. So ultimately, mathematically, if we were to lay this thing down, of course, now it would be straight across cut, right across this board, because it would be located at the same place that the bottom is located at. So from here it goes to a cross cut as you go further up, further up, further up, the miter angle becomes more and more pronounced until we get to at least this stage. Now, of course, if we went all the way up, so this was at 90 degrees, I'm just letting it stand here in the front, then it's going to match this angle. So we're going to go from a 90 degree cross cut when this board is laying down all the way up to the angle on this bevel gauge. It will be in between those two. So we can see now that if this board's angle, if the miter angle on this is changing based on its inclination, obviously this one here has nothing to do with its horizontal setting. We could never use this for its horizontal line, even though it turns out that in this particular board, it's pretty close. That's only because the pin board wasn't inclined much. But we can see that no matter what, it's never going to match.
So then you'll wonder, well, maybe it's actually going to be this gauge is setting. Maybe it's this one that actually could be it because we're changing this gauge's angle. So, of course, that's going to go with the miter angle. But we can see this one here has already been cut for this particular joint, and this is the setting for it. And we can already see that no matter which way I put this, it's never showing a horizontal line. So definitely this one isn't the one that's going to give us the horizontal line. So we can see that neither one of these is ever going to really give us the horizontal line. It might by coincidence just because of somewhere in there mathematically it might actually match it, but that's never going to be a given. So I just wanted to go over that and give you the little hint that, yep, yeah, when you're on the pin board and you need to strike that horizontal line, sure you could do it that way, but you could also just do this. It goes a lot faster. Then you can make your drawers and glue them up.